garage time. Oh, yeah! Finally. Coat weather, heater weather, but I'm in the garage. What are we doing today? Well, stinking Lincoln. It's getting a little bit of a repair slash upgrade. Um, I disconnected the chains in the back. And that sucker's got a pretty good lockup without the chains. But once you hook the chains back up, it limits the lockup, but it lets me three wheel, which I like. So what I'm gonna do, um, I know my brake lines are probably gonna be pretty upset with me. Might have to do some adjusting on that, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some taller cylinders in, hopefully. I got some 14 inch cylinders in there right now. Um, gonna put some 18s in it. Some problems I think I'm gonna have is the, uh, where the cylinders are gonna sit. That's how they look right now. But that's what the, the rear end locked up. So there is some room. But not a whole lot. With the thing laid out, um, it actually tips forward a little bit and kind of goes into the uh, the back seat area. So um, we'll see. We'll see what we got to do in order to make these 18s work. It's probably not going to be as easy as I'm hoping for, but very few things actually are. So. We'll see what we got to do. We'll make it work. But I also got some new springs for the rear. I got some pre-cut springs, which this thing really needs some pre-cut springs. Because the other coils I put in there are cut. Now when you cut a coil, check this out. There's a cut one. When you cut a coil, they're very uneven. They have one horn that sticks up uh, a lot further than the rest of it. Pre-cuts are nice because they stay relatively flat on top and on bottom. So that way they don't cause any damage. They don't have this sharp point digging. And on my rear end, I'll show you when I get underneath of it, this point actually snaked its way up through the chain bridge and is coiling itself up in there. So. so that's why I need to do some work on the rear end. And I figured while I'm in there, I might as well go bigger, right? I mean, who wants to take their crap apart and put the same old stuff back in it, you know? So I'm gonna try the 18s. Hopefully I can make them work. Let's get to it. Here we are looking at a rare look underneath of the Tickler Mobile. So you can see there's not much spring there. Sticking through like there is on the other side. <clears throat> because part of that spring is actually on the other side of the chain bridge, <clears throat> which is super neat. You can see how I ran my chains. That's the distance there. Because my car is fully locked up right now. Yes, it's on jack stand, so I will not die. Uh, but I actually can lift the car up, put the jack stands under it, and drop it. And this is how high it sits. So you can see the chains do limit my lockup quite a bit. And once you get that thing bolted in there, I mean, you lose, you lose four or five inches out of your lockup. Um, but they're kind of, kind of a necessity, at least for me. So we're going to get this old crap out of here and get that spring out, put the, just, we're going to slap the new stuff in. We're going to move on with our day. Yeah, that's how, uh, that's how easy it's going to go. I'm pretty sure of it. So one thing that does kind of suck about having your rear end reinforced, your jack, doesn't fit underneath the middle of your rear end anymore. At least in my case, it doesn't. 
So, you kind of have to do one side at a time underneath your trailing arm mounts. Lift it up. So all I'm gonna do is get a little bit of pressure up on this. Where it starts to pick up on the car. And then I'll drop it. Get some fluid out of the cylinder. And I'll just keep doing that until I got a little, little wiggle room. And it's just as simple, it's disconnected your hydraulic lights. Ugh. Clear back here in BFE. It's lefty loosey, right? Ugh. I'm just, I'm excited. I left myself so much room. There we go. These lines are always easy to get off. They're a real mother to get back on. Boom, disconnect. You might have a high rear lockup if you need a bucket to get down out of your trunk or a small ladder. Jeez. Now it's just as simple as unscrewing your balls and pulling the cylinder. Just as simple as that. Yeah, all right, this is too hard. Screw it. I quit. Yeah, there's still a lot of fluid in there. Might need it. A crowbar. Crowbar or no bar. Where'd my pry bar go? Man, every good low rider's got to have a good pry bar. There we go. Treat this thing like those your money. Neat. Just neat. Come on. Come on, let's tell me. Come on. Oh yeah. There you go. That's one USDA approved 14 inch. Thug rod. 14 inch thug rods. Ow. Then you gotta twist your balls off. Then you gotta twist your balls off. Then you gotta twist your balls off. There you go. There's one greasy ball. family show. I don't know what's up with the cylinder. I'll go back in. Maybe it's bent. Huh. No. It's not bad. Got a little fluid in it. All right, on to the next one. 
Thug Rod number two. And if you're Captain Observant, you'll notice that this spring is stuck as... Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't quite know yet how I'm going to get that out of there. But I have a feeling it may involve a plasma cutter. She is just, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to say she's stuck as a duck. Stuck as a duck. There we go. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah. I like how it doesn't move at all. That's how you know you're in for a treat. So it just coils itself up there. So why can't it just coil itself back out? I know. Because it's stupid. It's forcing me to do things I don't want to do. There she is, boys and girls. You want one coil for your front end, so hop and coil. We'll sell it to you, 45 bucks, shipped. 